Hi, and welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Linda McNamee, in for Phil Gallagher. A red fox attacked multiple people in Burlington on Tuesday and was eventually killed when it turned on a member of the Burlington Police Department. Burlington Animal Control Officer Jerry Mills said that at roughly 8 a.m., police were called to a Leopold Street residence on a report that a fox had attacked one woman who scared it off and bitten another woman twice, breaking the skin, and only ran off after her husband struck it several times. Police searched the area but did not locate the animal at that time. They did, however, increase patrols in the neighborhood. At approximately 2 p.m., a resident of a nearby street was attacked by a fox that pulled off her shoe and bit her, also breaking the skin. She then notified a patrol officer, Harry Sawyer, who was on patrol in her neighborhood. Sawyer began looking for the animal in her yard and was alerted to its presence when it made a noise. The fox then charged the officer, who discharged his firearm, killing the animal. The animal never made contact with him, and the officer was not hurt in the incident. Police firmly believe the animal that was killed was the same from the incident earlier that morning. Officer Mills said the animal's body was delivered to the state laboratory for testing and came back positive for rabies. Officer Mills said this type of behavior in wild animals, even ones infected with rabies, is extremely rare. He says he's dealt with hundreds of rabid animals in his 20 years as an animal patrol officer, and in that time, only three or four acted this aggressively. More often, he explained, rabid animals look like they are intoxicated. They stumble and fall down and act lethargic. Very rarely are they energetic and aggressive. Officer Mills said that people should be vigilant, but not to panic and to call police when they see animals acting strangely but not just because they are present. One reason is that during this time of year, it is more common to see animals such as foxes and coyotes out during the day because they are out looking for food to feed their young. Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan's office released information on grand jury indictments that were handed down between March 15th and April 17th and a Burlington man charged with possession of child pornography was included on the list. According to the DA's office, William Gates, 41 of Burlington, was charged with five counts possession of child pornography. Gates was first charged on March 30th in Middlesex Superior Court after police were tipped off that a man in the Boston area had been on a website used for sharing such materials. According to authorities, in November of 2017, Homeland Security investigators in Boston received information from an Australian law enforcement agency that an unknown individual in the Boston area may be engaged with a website known to law enforcement for sharing child pornography. Through their investigation, authorities determined the identity of the person to be Gates. During the investigation, multiple electronic devices were recovered from the defendant and his home in Burlington. Police say, over 1,000 images of child pornography were found during forensic examinations on five separate devices. The charges against Gates are allegations, and the defendant is presumed innocent until proven guilty. He has pled not guilty to the charges. Burlington Treasurer Tax Collector Brian Curtin said on Monday that he has changed his mind concerning his upcoming retirement. As reported by B News in February, Curtin said he was planning on retiring by not running for re-election when his current term expires in April of 2019. He was first elected as tax collector in 1976, and in 1977, the town combined those duties with the treasurer position. During the Monday night's Government Review Committee meeting, Curtin said he has reconsidered his position because the situation has changed. One big change was the Board of Selectmen's floating a town meeting warrant article that would have changed the treasurer collector position from an elected position to an appointed position. Selectman Bob Hogan, who proposed the idea, said he thought the change should be made because of how the complexity of the job and the size of the town budget have grown since Curtin was first elected. Other members of the board seemed open to the idea, but wanted to discuss it further, and currently there is an expectation it will be placed before town meeting in September. 
Another development is that town accountant Paul Sagarino has applied as an internal candidate to replace town administrator John Petron, who has also announced he will retire next year. As to whether the position should be changed from an elected to appointed position, Curtin said he likes it being elected. However, he said one problem is that he feels the current salary for the position is too low to get highly qualified candidates the town needs, whether it is an elected or appointed position. The starting salary for the town's treasurer collector is $85,000, which while not insignificant, he says is well below what qualified people would make in the private sector. Curtin said that depending on how things shape up with the town's financial leadership, he may or may not finish the full three-year term if he is reelected. He added he will stick around for as long as he is needed. Renovations are well underway at the Burlington Senior Center. B News Director Rich Hosford went to check out the progress and has this report. The renovations of the Human Services Building intended to give the Council on Aging and the Senior Center more space and room for facilities that was started last May is nearly complete. Last year, the Veterans Affairs Office, Board of Health, and Youth and Family Services left the second floor and work on the ceilings, floors, ducts, electrical, and the walls was completed, and in February, the Council on Aging moved up there to allow work to go full force on the first floor. In late April, Council on Aging Director Marge McDonald estimated the project was about 90% done. So I think we're, we're doing pretty well. We're doing, it's, it's coming along. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> The project has gone mostly smoothly with a couple of hiccups. It's had its moments. So overall, it's been pretty good. Um, we managed to move up here without um, any interruption to activities. Forgot a couple of things to bring with us for those activities in the first Monday morning, but overall, it went pretty well. Um, we've had to go down a lot to get new um, pieces of, in, of things that we forgot that we didn't realize we were going to need. Um, but overall, it's been pretty good. A lot of seniors have gotten lost in the hallways, um, not knowing where they're supposed to go. And they have to, unfortunately, walk a really long way to get to the elevator until we get the elevator door, um, outside door open. Um, so sometimes they're pretty exhausted by the time they get up here. Um, but we've tried to work. The contractor's been amazing working with us. Um, and things seem to, be pretty going, seem to be going really, really well at this point. To address the issue of visitors getting lost in the new space, a clever design trick was employed to help with navigation in the renovated facility. So we've done some way, um, wayfinding. You'll find that when you come in, there are, are two colors, main colors in the hallway, and the Council on Aging colors are going to be green with a really pretty kind of pastel minty green on the walls and dark um, green tiles on the floor along the wall as a border and Veterans and Board of Health are going to be blue with a light blue wall and dark blue tiles on the border. When it's done, the project will have new amenities for the seniors and room for the staff. So we have a brand new large activity room, um, which is not as large as the Mary Kelly, but it's pretty big and you can fit a lot of people in there. Um, and then we have the addition of another large room to use for um, exercise class or exercise so we're gonna put um, we uh, had somebody donate some curves equipment several years ago so we're gonna pull that out of storage hopefully it's okay and put that in the room um, and then we have another conf an additional conference room as well so we'll have more conference space overall Marge said she is happy with the renovations and that they will meet most of the needs of the senior center as it moves into the future I'm excited I think it's gonna be great um, I, I, it's not going to be exactly what we were supposed to get in the beginning, and it's not going to be quite enough space in the end, but it's, you know, it's progress. It's a lot of progress, and I think we'll be really happy in this space, and um, it'll, it will definitely be enough space for the next um, several years going forward. At the Senior Center, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. Thank you, Rich. Anyone who has unwanted firearms in their home can now get rid of them in a safe manner and receive some grocery money at the same time. The Burlington Police Department will hold a gun buyback event at the police station from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday, May 19th. The program is made possible by a number of groups, including the Burlington Police Department, the Middlesex Sheriff's Department, Burlington Board of Health, the Burlington Clergy Group, and Wegmans. 
those who submit firearms will receive a $25 gift card to Wegmans in exchange for each one they return in. They turn in a notice from the department states. Airsoft or BB guns may also be turned in, but owners of those items will not be compensated for doing so. Officers will also be available during the event to retrieve, retrieve firearms from the homes of residents who wish to surrender them but are unable to attend in person. All guns that are turned in will be safely destroyed. Police Chief Michael Kent said this is an excellent opportunity for residents to remove unwanted firearms from their home and feel confident that they won't fall into the wrong hands. He said he encourages anyone who is interested in surrendering their unwanted firearms to do so at this event, and he wants to thank the partner agencies and Wegmans for making this possible. Anyone with questions may reach out to Detective Thomas Carlson by phone at 781-505-4913. The multi-story fitness center Lifetime Athletic has arrived in Burlington and is currently taking on new customers and clients for its very list of stories. B News reporter Tad Stefanak went to check it out and has this look. A new addition to the amenities of 3rd Ave Burlington is Lifetime Athletic. So Lifetime Athletic here in Burlington is a luxurious athletic resort where we really focus on meeting the health and fitness needs of the entire family. So we know um, that in order to build a healthy way of life, we have to address uh, those needs for every single member. So we offer kids programming starting as young as three months up to our adult group fitness classes. Lifetime Athletic has something for everybody, including four resort-style pools. Two indoor pools and two outdoor pools, so four, and they're all heated, which is great for New England, especially during the summertime. We know it's not always warm. We will have uh, spa-like amenities and our spacious locker rooms for members, so dry sauna, steam room, whirlpool. Uh, we have four squash courts, two basketball courts. We have a basketball court just for the kids. Well, Lifetime really prides themselves on being able to bring those best performers uh, from our community all into one place so that adults can take care of themselves, that your kids have the best people for, to take care of them as well, um, and that you're just getting uh, that best motivating, inspiring experience so that you can live your best life. And for those of you looking to join, if you are interested in learning more information, we're going to be grand opening May 11th, but we are still selling founding memberships. Uh, you can call us uh, and we'll ha be happy to answer any of those questions and give you those next steps. You know, I just think that this is going to be such a great place for the community. You already know friends and family members that are going to be here. So don't wait because as soon as we open those doors, you're going to want to be a part of it. Um, but we are having um, that best start now. I mean, why put it off? From Lifetime Athletic, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tad. This year, the volunteer program at Leahy Hospital and Medical Center celebrates its 25th anniversary. Over the last quarter of a century, the program and the hospital has seen many changes, but one constant for them both is Charlotte Rickard, who has been part of the volunteer program since day one. Charlotte is the only volunteer who has been here since the program started, said Mary Iodice, Director, Volunteer Community Services. Iodice said Charlotte has become a dear friend to many members of the staff and embodies what the volunteer program is all about, making Leahy a more compassionate and welcoming place for patients, families, and visitors. Today, the program boasts close to 200 volunteers over a dozen of whom trail not too far behind Rickert, with close to 20 years and thousands of hours of service to the hospital. Rickert began volunteering in hospital admissions in 1993 after her children had grown and left the house. Rickert had spent nearly every Wednesday afternoon for the last 25 years helping the hospital admissions team with clerical tasks and paperwork. Rickert says that over the years, faces have changed and technology has progressed but she still feels the same sense of gratification being able to help. The Burlington Athletic Boosters Club has their third annual celebrity basketball fundraiser. The event is a way to help support student athletics in the Burlington schools. B News reporter Robert Paris attended the event and has this report. 
The gym at Burlington High School was filled with students and their families as they watched players from the New England Patriots play a basketball game against people from the Burlington business community. Last week, the Burlington Athletic Boosters Club hosted their third annual celebrity basketball fundraiser where proceeds will help support student athletes and the schools and the booster club. So we've been doing this for three years now. Our boosters organization comes in and works with Mike Cash, who has the relationship with the Patriots, gets the guys here, and it's a great I got an opportunity to meet the newest Patriot on the team, University of Iowa alumni and wide receiver Riley McCarron. I actually signed with the Patriots uh, in week two of last year. Um, and I spent last year on the practice squad, so um, you know, hoping to make the team this year. We'll see what happens. There were a variety of people from local businesses who played against the Patriots during the fundraiser. So I work for Salem Five Bank, who's a bank here in Burlington, and uh, you know, we donated to this event, and then we. Uh, me and my boss Alex who are playing here tonight for the game. Finally, win or lose, everyone came out and showed their support. Well, I just think it's a great community event. I mean, you have the New England Patriots, five-time Super Bowl champions. I said they come down here, they're part of our community, they want to be part of what New England is, and Burlington's a big part of that. They love having them here, so the, the fans are out to see them, and it's a great night. People should understand that this is for a good cause, and, you know, more events like this should happen more often. Uh, just to come out here and have fun and just have a good time and, you know, just put on a, a good show for the fans and have some fun. From Burlington High School, I'm Robert Paris for B News Weekly. Thank you, Robert. A Burlington Middle School student's artwork has been chosen for a statewide publication. Marshall Simon's middle school eighth grader Navia Garg's photography, Chameleon, was selected for publication in the Massachusetts High School Magazine of the Arts, the only statewide print and online publication featuring jury-selected artwork, photography, poetry, and creative writing by students in grades 8 through 12. Chameleon was selected from over 700 works submitted by teens from schools and community organizations across the Commonwealth. All published works are juror-selected to ensure artistic excellent. excellence. Through this selective process, the Marble Collection, nonprofit publisher of the Massachusetts High School Magazine of the Arts, strives to assemble the most diverse and acclaimed collection of work. When describing her work, Garg says she's focused on the changes people make throughout their lives. After being selected for publication, Navia Garg participated in the Marble Collection's free mentoring for publication workshop, in which she was paired one-to-one -one with a college student mentor to develop their 21st century skills through four steps, create, respond, connect, and present. In the six-week workshop, teens explore the creative process, edit their work for publication and exhibition, and learn to present their artistic visions to audiences. As for her future work, Garg says she wants to continue making pieces that speak to people and make them feel good about themselves and the world. The warm weather definitely hit Burlington this week. To see what's in store for the weeks ahead, we go now to B News weatherman Peter Brown in our weather center for the latest forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Maddie Shipka to see what's happening in Burlington. Hello everyone, and this is Peter Brown with a look at your weather for the next seven days. Now, here we are finally into May, and we haven't been seeing much spring weather, um, that's for certain, but we have been seeing plenty of summer weather over the per past couple of days. And I know for many of you, probably going from the cold weather we were having up into the upper 80s to near 90 might be a little bit too much in terms of heat for you, but definitely is a nice change from all of that cold winter weather that we've been having really up until the last two weeks or so. Now, starting out our period, look at this. We're going to see another really warm day on Friday. Temperatures well above average in the low 80s. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be a little bit cloudier and maybe some more showers and maybe some strong thunderstorms starting out on Friday. So we're not going to see as much in the way of sunshine like we saw last Wednesday and Thursday. So not quite as nice in terms of that, not as dry, pretty humid out there to start the period out. And, of course, as we get towards the end of the period, look at that. We're getting into the middle of May. And our high temperatures average should be around 70, and that's pretty much what we're going to be seeing as we head in towards the end of next week. 
pretty average temperatures, nice conditions for the start to May. And of course, as you notice here, the days just keep getting longer and longer, so we are marching on towards summer. Now, as we go ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's going to be going on with our weather for the next seven days. And this map looks actually very similar to what we saw last week in our analysis, and this is a real summertime looking map. Completely different than what we've been experiencing since the start of March. We're going to again see this Bermuda High, the strong Bermuda High that's been giving us the really, really warm temperatures here in the Burlington area. That's going to start to push away from us a little bit as we get into the latter part of Friday. Again, bringing that chance of showers and thunderstorms to our area. Now behind this front, look at this. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine coming into our area from southeastern central Canada with another big high pressure center. This is just absolutely beautiful weather. Really, we have struck a real, real lucky streak in terms of the weather after what we have seen. Now, as we go in, of course, into the middle of next week, the sun is going to keep coming down here. We're going to have very, very pleasant conditions when we get towards, say, getting into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. The temperatures pretty nice in the 70s and really no big storms, no cold coming, so beautiful conditions ahead. As we go ahead, I'm going to show you a little bit about those beautiful weather and conditions and temperatures we're going to be seeing. And again, starting out on Friday, we're going to see a little bit in the way of humidity, so a little bit uncomfortable if you're going to be out there and about in the Burlington area going out to dinner Friday night. We may see some unsettled conditions, but again, temperatures pretty warm in the low 80s. As we get into Saturday, that's really going to be the pick of the weekend. We're going to see some partly cloudy skies, and temperatures actually might be a little bit warmer than this. We may actually see Highs topping around 75 or 76 degrees in our area, so beautiful conditions. Now, Sunday, we are going to see a little bit maybe of a backdoor cold front trying to come into the area, coming into the Burlington area. And if you're going to be out and about in town or you're going into the city, you may see temperatures a little bit cooler than this. So going to be a little bit of cooler feel to the air on Sunday, about 20 degrees colder than what we've been seeing over the past few days. But as we get into Monday, look at this, all the way through to the end of the period on Thursday. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, temperatures starting off about average, a little bit cooler than average on Monday, only in the mid and lower 60s. But look at this as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We add a couple of degrees each day. Beautiful temperatures in the mid and lower 70s. And look at the nighttime lows, very pleasant. So if you have to be outside doing anything at all in the area, you are going to have absolutely wonderful conditions. So everyone, get out there, enjoy this beautiful spring weather we're having, and have a great week. Shipka, and this is your community calendar. The Burlington Players are back. On May 4th through the 19th, the Burlington Players will be performing the play Companies based on the book by George Firth. The play is about a man named Bobby who is a lone bachelor on his 35th birthday. He is uncertain whether he should be simply happy with his life or whether he should wish for his own romantic partner. Everyone is welcome. For more info and times, and tickets, visit burlingtonplayers.com or call 781-229-2649. Nothing like some good old clean fun. On Thursday, May 17th at 7 p.m., the Burlington Public Library will be having Julie Pelletier Ritkow for her presentation on spring cleaning, the Feng Shui approach. Join as she discusses how to clean using the Feng Shui method. Everyone is welcome and the event is free. For more information, visit burlington.org or call 781-270-270. 1690. Come show your support for the Burlington Public Schools. On Friday, May 18th at 7 a.m. at the Green Meadow Golf Club and the Outback Steakhouse will be the 18th annual Ted Ferguson Memorial Golf Tournament. The cost for a single player is $125. The event will honor numerous scholarships to BHS and Shashin Valley Tech High School. Everyone is welcome. Registration deadline is May 8th. For more information, please contact Bunny Ferguson at 781 Two seven zero nine two seven nine. I'm Maddie Shipka, and this has been your community calendar. Thank you. The Burlington Red Devils are playing hard across the, all the spring sports. For the latest action, we go now to B News sports reporter Matt Demarzio for this week's sports report. Hey everyone, this is Matt Demarzio here for your weekly sports report. What are you doing Sunday morning? If you feel like getting some exercise for a good cause, 
head over to the high school for the Burlington Education Foundation's annual 5K road race. The event will start at 8 o'clock and is always a fun and challenging way to spend a Sunday morning. Mark your, mark your calendars for October 4th. That's the night of the Burlington High Athletic Hall of Fame 2018 induction banquet. A terrific group is being enshrined this year, a group that includes Jason Clifford, class of 1992, Adam Jenkins, class of 2001, Lisa Marchese Irgot, class of 1989, Glenn McGowan, class of 1981, Gregory Nelson, class of 2007, Jennifer Pondelli Scarpelli, class of 1999, Bradley Schuler, class of 1971, Coach Edward Murray, the 2006 football team, and benefactors Anthony DeSimone and Anthony Cedrone. The Hall of Fame banquet will be held from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the Cafe Escadrille in Burlington. Tickets are $50 and may be purchased at the BHS BHS Athletic Office at Burlington High or by calling 781-273-7077 or 781-270-1867. The current group of Burlington High athletes is enjoying a fine spring season. The softball squad is off to another fast start and is undefeated against Middlesex League Freedom Division teams. The Red Devils have lost only once in extra innings to Woburn. In recent action, the girls beat Melrose 11-5 and shut out Reading 8-0. With an 8-2 win over Watertown recently, the baseball team was 4-2 after its first six games and on pace to qualify for the state tournament. The boys lacrosse team is also in the playoff mix, improving to 6-5 overall after beating Wilmington by a 13-6 score. The tennis teams are also battling for the postseason. After eight matches, the boys are, were 4-4, four four, while the girls are in first place in the Freedom Division behind Coach Chris Sweeney. And that's all for your weekly sports report. I'm Matt DeMarzio, and back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Matt. Another week, another photo to highlight. This week, we have a beautiful photo capturing a bucolic scene taken right here in Burlington. It was sent in by Shashila Patel and shows five white-tailed deer of varying ages frolicking in her backyard. She calls the photo Backyard Fun. Thanks for the photo, Sheila. We'd like to see your photos. They could be of something you see around town, the weather outside your own door, or even photos of your family members and pets. Whatever you think is interesting and would like to share. Email your photos to bcat at bcattv.org with the subject line, Photo of the Week. Well, that's it for this week's edition of B News Weekly. I'm Linda McNamee, and I'll see you around town.